All right. Good evening, you. How are you doing? Doing fine, doing well, doing good by the grace of God, yeah? Great. Today, we are entering into the second week of the month of motivation. And today, I have entitled my message as Divine Motivation. Divine Motivation. Remember, in the month of February, we learn about divine call and we define the word divine. Divine means something godly. It's like I told you during that week that divine touch is the touch from God. So divine is something that is related to God, godly. So when we talk about divine motivation, it means a motivation that comes from God. All right? So, today, we're going to see the difference between worldly motivation and divine motivation. Both of them are motivation. Worldly motivation is motivation. Divine motivation is also motivation. Both of them are motivation. But there are something that is very, very different between these two types of motivation. Between worldly motivation and divine motivation. The focus is very, very different. Let us find out what is the difference. What is the difference between the worldly motivation and the divine motivation? So, first, let us find out about worldly motivation. How do people in the world keep themselves motivated? What do they see? to keep themselves achieving the goal that they want to achieve. People of the world are very, very self-motivated. Their focus of motivation is themselves. They say, if you cannot encourage yourself, no one else can do it for you. If you cannot stay positive in your mind first, no one can do it for you. If you cannot set your dream right, no one can do it for you. So. Everything is self. I can do this. I can stay positive. I can achieve my goal. I can have my dream. I can buy a big car. I can buy a big house. I can have the best university in town. I can make good friends. Everything is me, myself. Everything is so self-motivated. That's why they say the best motivation is self-motivation. You have to motivate yourself first. If you cannot motivate yourself, don't expect other people to motivate you. Don't expect people to help you, people to guide you. No, you yourself have to be self-motivated first. That is what they say. That's why they say self-motivation is key. You won't be successful without it. Which means their success is based on their self-motivation. If I can be motivated by myself first, I can stay motivated, I can stay positive in whatever situation that I am in, I can be successful. No matter how much I fail, if I can be self-motivated, I can be successful. Their focus of motivation is in themselves. They say, if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. As long as you believe in yourself, I can achieve this, I can achieve that, I can buy a big house, big car, whatever that is that you aim to achieve, as long as you believe in yourself, you are able to achieve it. That's why every day they stand in front of the mirror and tell themselves, I can do this, I can do that, I can be the richest man in town, I can have the dream job, I can achieve straight A's, I can do that. I can do this. Their motivation is in themselves. Every day they look at the mirror and see themselves as a lion, even though they are just a cat. They say, what matters most is how you see yourself. Do you see yourself as a cat or do you see yourself as a lion? So, who their focus is in, is in themselves. Every day they say, you can do this. You can achieve this. You can be the best student. You can get scholarship. You can be the best worker. You can do this. You can do that. The focus is myself, me, I, mine. Everything is me. That's why they push themselves. 
They say, push yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. You have to do it. Come on, do it. That is self-motivation. That is worldly motivation, church. They will say, it's about that time to focus on what is important. And guess what is important to them? It's me, myself, and I. As long as I can achieve what I want, I'm successful. That is their aim in life. That is their focus. Or maybe you can say, oh, most of them are not so self-centered. They still care about their family. They provide for their family or they, they score good grades so that they can get scholarship and help their parents. Yet, church, that is also self-motivation, self-motivated. The center point is myself. I want my family to live a good life. That's why I want to have a big car, big house, or studying in the best university in town. So the focus is still me, myself, and I. That is worldly motivation. Focus. Focus is me, myself, and I. What does the Bible say about this? Let us see in Luke chapter 12, verse 13 to 21, where Jesus tells a parable of the rich fool. This is what Jesus said. Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take it and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, Okay, from this part, right, I want you all to calculate with me how many times he said the word I, myself, me, I. Something related to me. Okay, ready? Let us calculate together uh, as I read. What shall I do? The first one, I. Since I have no room to store my crops. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there I will store all my crop and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool! This night your soul will be required of you. Then, Whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Wow! Church, just in three verses, verse 17, 18, and 19, the word I, me, my is appearing 11 times. This shows how self-centered this person is. This parable of the rich fool is showing us the example of worldly motivation. How this rich fool is encouraged, is motivated to gather buns for himself, gather crops, gather goods for himself, to store up everything that he has. But what will God say? Fool! Fool! This night, your soul will be required of you. Then, whose will those things be which you have provided? After all those things that you have achieved, after all those A's that you have gotten in your studies, after the best job that you have got, after all the money that you have made, after buying a big car, big house, 
everything you achieve. So what? The things of this world is perishable, church. That's why we seek for the things that are above, that is not perishable. Not like this rich fool, church. He focused on the things on earth without realizing that he may even lose his own soul. Today, we are born again by the gospel of God's righteousness. We have been saved through the water, blood and spirit of Jesus. We believe in the baptism of Jesus, how John the Baptist laid his hand, all our lifetime of sin will pass unto Jesus, how he died for us and rose again. Today, church, we are sinless and righteous. Our motivation is not worldly motivation. Our motivation comes from God. It's a divine motivation. Why? It's because we cannot put our confidence in the flesh. In the flesh, none of us is good. In the flesh, none of us is perfect. In the flesh, nothing is good. Two weeks ago, we learned from our Abide Wall verse taken from Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and it is exceedingly perverse and corrupt and severely mortally sick. Who can know it, perceive, understand, be acquainted with his own heart and mind? Church, no one can understand the heart of man, how wicked we are, how full of shortcoming we are, how full of iniquity we are. And in February, February 8, our Abide War verse, taken from Mark chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thought, adulteries, fornication, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. How can we put our confidence in ourselves, knowing that we are full of shortcoming, knowing we are full of sin apart from Christ? Our confidence is not in ourselves. Our confidence is in Christ. All those things that this rich fool is doing is worldly motivation. He's motivated by himself. How many buns he can gather? How many crops he can gather? How many goods he can store up? We are not like that, church. We are heavenly people. We are kingdom nation. We are people from above. We do not seek for temporal thing. We seek for eternal thing, church. And today's Abide War verse, I want to bring you again to realization that we are nothing. We are born as a sinner. Therefore, today's Abide Wall is taken from Psalms chapter 51, verse 5, where it says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Wow. This is who we really are, church. Ever since we are born, when we are still in our mother's womb, before we even do anything, we are already conceived with sin. How can we put our confidence, our trust, our motivation on the things that are so wicked and so full of shortcoming? No, church. Our focus should not be ourselves. We are not worldly people. We are people from above. Amen? Sometimes people in the world, they may think that, ah, oh, I'm not that bad of a person. I am actually very good. The people around me, the surrounding, the environment that make me to become bad. But that is not the case, church. We are born 
with iniquities. We are conceived with sin in our mother's womb. That is our true nature. We have to realize who we are so that we will not put confidence on ourselves, me, myself and I, what I can achieve. How can I be successful? I have to study hard. I have to be self-motivated. I have to have a dream. I have to achieve this, achieve that. No. When you know how wicked you are, how you have 12 kinds of sin, how you are conceived with sin, since you are in your mother's womb, you will not want to put your motivation in yourself. Right? The people in the world just focus on themselves. They say, focus on yourself. Focus on me. That is worldly motivation, church. Now, enough of worldly motivation. Let us see what is divine motivation. Divine motivation. The divine motivation is not focusing on me. It's not focusing on me, myself, and I. But the focus is in Christ. Just like what we see last week, taken from Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. Since then, you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Set your mind on things above above. On things above, church, is far greater than on ourself. Worldly motivation teach us to invest in ourself, seek, set our mind on ourself. I can do this, I can do that. But for us, we set our mind on things above. Why? Why is that so? Let us read in verse 3. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. For you died, church. You died. When you believe in the gospel of God's righteousness, when you believe that John the Baptist laid his hand to pass all your lifetime of sin to Jesus, he not only take your sin, he take all of who you are, your old nature, all that, you are in your flesh has been passed upon the body of Jesus. That's why when he died, you died. When you rose again, you rose again with him. And today you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit because you died. Without dying, the Spirit of God cannot live inside of you. Why? Because God cannot share glory with you. God cannot be like, sharing throne in your heart. You want to live by your own and then you want to have the Spirit of God. No, God doesn't share His throne. That's why it's very important for us to die. When we die to our flesh, die to ourself, we know that God, my motivation comes from you. The focus is you and you and you alone so that all the glory will go back to you. Even if I score good grade, even I have the best job, even if I go to the best university, all the glory goes back to you. Because my motivation comes from you, I died. Everything that I am died. When Jesus hung on that cross, I was with him. I died. No longer my desire, no longer my motivation, no longer my will, my goal is yours. It's only when we walk in the Spirit, we can experience this divine motivation, church. Now, after we are born again, we know that we have flesh and spirit. That's why it's very important for us to set our priority right to set our goal right. Where is your goal, church? Where is your focus? Is it on the things of this world? Or is it on the finished work of Christ? If you put your confidence, your motivation, your desire, and all those things in the world, it is shakable. Let me remind you, it is shakable. One day, Everything will be shaken. Just like the 
parable of the rich fool just now you read. He gathered everything. He said, I want to store this. My barn, my house, my this, my that. Everything is mine, me, myself. But God will ask him, Today, today church, if your soul is required of you, where will you be? Will you be in the presence of God? Or will, be, or will you be apart from God? That's our choice. We want to be in Christ or apart from Christ. We want our motivation to be self-motivation or Christ's motivation. Our eyes. We cannot be one eyes looking at God, one eyes looking at the world. The Bible says that God is a jealous God because He loves us that much that He don't want us to lust after the things of this world. For the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is the thing of this world, church. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. How can we love two? How can we love the world and love God at the same time? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, No one can serve two masters. Either you will love the one and hate the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. In this sense, he's talking about money. But it's applicable to anything in this world, church. We cannot serve two masters. You cannot say that I love my boyfriend, I love my girlfriend, I love my husband, I love my wife, but yet you love another person. God is a jealous God. God is a jealous God, church. He loves you so much that He wants you to be devoted to Him alone. Serve Him, church. Be motivated in Christ. Have the divine motivation, not things in this world. Our focus should be kingdom focus. Kingdom focus. Our focus should be in Christ. Whatever that we do is in Christ. Whatever that I achieve is in Christ. That is divine motivation. The worldly motivation is me, myself, and I, but the divine motivation is in Christ. The focus is very, very different in Christ church. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. That's why it's very important to unite with him in his baptism, die with him. Dying is very important. Dying to our desire, dying to our flesh, dying to all who we are so that we can live in the newness of life church. Apart from Christ, we can do nothing. Remember, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. If you died, it's no longer you who live, but Christ living inside of you. That's why your motivation comes from Christ. There is a very good motivational quote from the Bible taken from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ. This is the key word, through Christ who strengthened me. The ability to do anything is through Christ. Let us read this in Amplified Version. Amplified Version said, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. My sufficiency, church, is in Christ. My righteousness is is in Christ. My motivation is in Christ. My holiness 
is in Christ. My diligence is in Christ. My serving is in Christ. Everything that I do is in Christ. So that all the glory will go back to Him. When I score good mark, I know how to give back the glory to Him. When one day I become very successful, I can give all the glory back to Him. For I know, apart from Him, I can do nothing. That's why church is also very important for us to know who are we in Christ? Who am I in Christ? Do you know who you are in Christ? I believe some of you have known so much of who you are in Christ. We have heard enough of preaching in church. Who are you in Christ? I'm righteous. I'm sinless. I'm a royal priesthood. Let's see these slides. It says, I'm seated with Christ. I'm a member of God's household. I'm dead to sin. I'm complete. I'm God's righteousness. I am beloved. I'm not ashamed. I am a child of God. I have the spirit of God. I'm a believer. I'm help. I am disciplined. I'm saint. I'm a living stone. I'm saved by grace through faith. All this is who you are in Christ. But church, knowing itself has no use if you're not applying it. Knowledge puff up. Love edifies. Let's see this picture. This man is standing on a lot, a lot of ladders. What does it teach you? This man church have all the resources. You see what it says here. It doesn't matter how many resources you have. If you don't know how to use them, it will never be enough. I think most of us coming in this church, we have heard enough. We have the word of God planted so much in our heart. But having so much doesn't benefit you if you don't know how to use. You are a child of God, yes? So what? How do I use that? I'm righteous, I'm sinless. So what? How do you use that? Just like this man standing on a stack of ladders, not knowing how to use it. We are a child of God, church. Do not use our freedom to sin. We are freed from all our sin, not for us to be free to sin. We are free from sin, not free to sin. Now that we are sinless and righteous, we are not to go back to our yoke of slavery, just like how it is written in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Having so much knowledge, church, is not useful. Knowledge is power, but without application, knowledge is useless. You have so much knowledge for what? Knowledge puff up. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1b, it says, Knowledge puff up, but love edifies. Do you remember the sermon title, Example of an Elect? We learned five points. Speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. And under the point love, we learn about walking in love. We learn about our action, our words, and all that we do. Will my action cause others to stumble? That is walking in love. If I have so much knowledge of the word of God, I'm sinless, I'm righteous, I'm pure, I'm royal priesthood, I'm this, I'm that. If you are not walking in love, you may stumble your brother and sister in Christ. And that knowledge, which is supposed to be useful for you, became useless. Because you don't know how to apply the knowledge in your life. You only gather, just like this man who gather all the leather without knowing how to use it. 
if only he knows how to use one, he's able to see what is on the other side. Today, we also need to know how to use the knowledge that we have. We have heard enough sermon church throughout the year, throughout the months, and it's time for us to apply what we learn. Amen? So church, just a quick summary of what we have learned today. Today, we learn about two types of motivation. Firstly, is worldly motivation. And the second one is divine motivation. Worldly motivation, we see that people in the world are very self-motivated. They say the best motivation is self-motivation. It's all about me, myself, and I. But we know today that we are born again, we know that our heart is deceitful above all things. We have 12 kinds of sin in our heart and we are conceived with sin in our mother's womb. And we know that we are not supposed to be self-motivated. We are not supposed to be like people in the world who keep their motivation in themselves, who stay motivated because of what they do, because of what I achieve, because I stay motivated, I think positive. All those things will not hold water, church. That's why we learn about the divine motivation. The divine motivation which only comes in Christ. Our focus is on Christ. Our focus is in the kingdom of God. And everything that we do is in Christ so that all the glory will go back to Him. For we know that apart from Christ, we can do nothing. Apart from Christ, we can do nothing, church. And we also see about knowing who we are in Christ is very important. But knowing alone is not enough. We have to apply what we know. It's just like when we go to university, go to school. When we learn, 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 but we are not applying what we learn, then what we learn become useless. When I study, 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 but during exam time, I cannot apply what I study. At the end of the day, I cannot get good grade also. So it's the same thing. Are we able to apply what we know? Knowledge is power, but without application, knowledge is useless. Don't be like this man. Don't be like this man who used all his resources wrongly. If only he could use one correctly, he could have seen what is on the other side. Today also, we have the ladder. We have the resources. We have all that we need in order to preach the gospel, in order to stay strong in this gospel. We have to make use of that church. We have to stay true in the gospel of God's righteousness. Amen.